in Glastonbury, which is also a green light location. Our officers were there doing uh, the surveillance work that we've asked them to do regarding carjackings. Uh, we were looking for uh, a number of carjacking suspects. Uh, they were in that area uh, for that purpose. They located an a SUV Sunday night at that gas station, uh, and that vehicle uh, was believed to have been involved in a carjacking. In fact, the vehicle itself was stolen, uh, and we believed at that time uh, uh, during a carjacking. The officers attempted to stop the vehicle. It fled, ramming uh, the officer's vehicle, and in fact, driving over the front of the officer's vehicle. Uh, and nearly crushing one of our officers. Our officer had to literally roll out of the way as the vehicle was uh, attempting to run him over. Uh, the officers fired multiple times, uh, but we do not believe at this time any of those shots took effect, that, that uh, firing sh those shots were uh, within our policy guidelines. Uh, my review of the video showed that to be the case. Uh, we are searching for the driver of the vehicle, and we are asking our community who has come through for us many times to do so again tonight. Uh, and to provide us information uh, on that suspect before he injures anyone else. And we are searching for Mr. Michael Brown. Again, that's Mr. Michael Brown, and that's his, his picture there. And we are confident that that is our suspect, that is the driver of our vehicle, or of that vehicle uh, in particular. Uh, and again, we're asking that our community assist us in getting him off the street before he hurts, injures, carjacks, uh, or assaults anyone else. I uh, also think it's important to note that if you are harboring Mr. Brown, uh, that you can also be facing charges. So again, uh, we're looking for Michael Brown, Michael Malik Brown, uh, and at this time I'm going to bring up uh, Director Gravelin, uh, who is over our professional standards, who can provide a little bit more detail into the investigation uh, with regards to the officer involved shooting. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon. On Sunday, September 4th, 2022, at approximately 5 p.m., Detroit police officers responded to an armed robbery run at a gas station on the corner of Fenkel and Beaverland. Upon arriving there, they learned that a white 2012 GMC Yukon had been carjacked by a person described as a black male, slim build, approximately six feet tall, and carrying a silver handgun. Gentlemen. Later that same evening, Detroit police officers working on the department's drag racing detail spotted the stolen GMC Yukon during a rolling surveillance operation in the area of Lasher and West McNichols. The surveilling officers were able to advise dispatch that the stolen Yukon had entered into a gas station near the corner of Eight Mile and Glassenbury and requested marked police car assistance for the arrest. Several marked units uh, entered the parking lot to effect the arrest. And as you can see, the Yukon backed up into one of our scout cars and then rolled over top of yet another scout car that had attempted to box it in. One individual had already exited the Yukon to give himself up to the police, and a second one also exited as the Yukon was fleeing the police. As you can see, the Yukon rolled over the top of the front of our scout car and knocking over one of our officers seen there on the ground to the uh, right of the Yukon. Then the officer had to roll out of the way as the Yukon tilted over top of our scout car, nearly crushing our police officer. It was at this time that that police officer, as well as two of his uh, assisting officers, fired shots at the Yukon. You can see here, the, our officer is approximately a foot to 18 inches away from that car as it tilted over top of the scout car. The Yukon then exited the parking lot, but the surveilling officers from our uh, drag racing detail were able to follow that vehicle for approximately three blocks where it crashed into a tree at, uh, on Faust. Based upon the evidence at the scene, we do not believe any of the nine shots that the officers fired took effect, although we were able to see that eight of those nine shots impacted the Yukon, but we do not believe that it hit the driver or the other occupant that was in the Yukon at the time. We were able to arrest the occupant of the Yukon, the third person uh, who had uh, exited the vehicle, but we are still in search of the driver, Mr. Michael Malik Brown. He is uh, 15 years old, will be turning 16 in October, uh, but the, this is the person that we are currently in search of.
from Chris with everything. Okay. Any other questions? All right, at this time, we'll take any questions. Chief, there was a reported trail of blood at some different locations. Could that have been from the shots taking effect, or you say you don't believe the shots took effect? We didn't find a trail of blood. Some blood. Um, there was uh, some blood evidence at the scene, but we don't think it's uh, consistent with a gunshot at this time. But again, uh, what makes it important that we get our suspect off the street, number one. Um, we've been in contact with hospitals, and there, there's a process to all of this uh, that we've been following to ensure that we don't have a gunshot victim. Uh, and we also have some more intelligence uh, that I can't get into uh, that supports our theory. Can you tell us anything more about the background or the person you're looking for? Uh, that is dangerous and uh, that is someone we need to get off the street immediately be, uh, before he victimizes someone else. Uh, as you saw uh, with the, the him driving over the scout car and attempting to run the officer over and the officer literally having to roll uh, from under the front of the car as it was approaching him, uh, he's not going to simply stop and he's not going to likely uh, turn himself in. We hope he does uh, because uh, he's a very violent offender. He's young but he's very violent. And so we need anyone who sees and knows him to assist us in getting him off the street. Because what we're looking at, the car is being used as a weapon. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the car was being used as a weapon. He was certainly going to likely kill the officer. Was another shot fired by any of the officers down the street on Glastonbury at 20266 Glastonbury? K9 I'm not familiar situation with that. situation with the dog? Oh, you're speaking of the dog uh, situation. We're, uh, I've got some information uh, this morning. Uh, bringing me up to speed on the incident that has to do with the dog. Uh, I don't have a, a, a lot of information right now uh, on that other than the fact, as my understanding, uh, that we may have had to put a dog down. I don't have the details with, with it right now. If, so, if that does have to happen, what would normally the officers eventually, when everything is calmed down, contact the dog owner or talk to the homeowner where that took place? Yeah, yeah there, I mean, there's protocols and processes, and my prep today for this is to, to deal with this violent offender. I'll give you more on the dog later. Um, Certainly, um, you know, anytime we have to put a dog down, it's, a, it's, it's not a good day for, for the department or the citizen who owns it. But I just don't have enough information to give you an intelligent response. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Um, Kara Berg with the Detroit News. Were the other people in the vehicle juveniles as well? I don't have all that information on the two adults. Two adults, one juvenile. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, everybody.